Empaths. <laughs> Stop your addiction to narcissists. It's absolutely killing you. And it's destroying humanity. <laughs> That's all. Hey, what's up? It's Leah. This is really important that we talk about this. We need to stop making narcissism the cool thing, right? Like we're all singing along to uh, Adam Levine, like, oh, girls like me, like guys like you. Oh yeah, teach me how to be a narcissist. Boop, 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 boop. Just living your best life over there, narcissists. Cramming it down all of us to live your way. Empaths. Stop your addiction to narcissists. It's absolutely killing you. And it's destroying humanity. <laughs> that sounds really grave. And I don't mean to laugh and smile about it because it's actually really awful. And I, and I keep thinking I don't need to talk about this. And then I'll meet somebody or run into somebody. And it's like, God is like, Leah, you have to continue to talk about this. You have dealt with this. It has hurt people that you love. It has damn near killed you, caused cancer in your body, has harmed good people around you. You have to talk about this. Empaths. Remember when the word empath wasn't even a thing? Remember when that wasn't a mystical creature because kindness and empathy were common traits? Remember when the narcissist didn't steal that and defame that as now being something stupid <laughs> and unpopular? You guys, narcissists are taking over. This is imperative that we pay attention to this. Every time I meditate and I chill out with myself, I wanna back off and be like, no, that's not the most loving thing. And that's how empaths, they get us to continue in this cycle. That's how they use your very own good nature and empathy against you. So yesterday I released a video about anger and it was just a short, so it's hard to jam everything into like a sound bite, right? But Really, your anger can be good. And the epiphany that I had this morning, this Sunday morning on a full moon Sunday morning, we're going to church today, preach me, okay? We're going to church. That you can be kind and loving and also use your anger to stand up for things that are not right. I mean, even Jesus was not a pushover. So, this idea that you can't be high vibe and talk about things that are very low vibration that actually make you angry because it's damn near killing you or killing somebody you love or maybe it has killed somebody you love. Sometimes when we just sit back and we're like, oh, it's just all one love and peace and love, we get trampled again and again and again. And the narcissist is like, ha, 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 as they sit fireside with their new supply and their sweater soiree, like, oh, schnookies, schnookies, I don't know what the problem is. Let's snuggle up. And you're going, what the hell just happened? So that's why us good people are fed up and we're talking about it. Because we have to demystify empathy. Empathy was a common trait. Can we bring that back so that it's not this mystical, stupid creature that people make fun of now? That, has what, that is what narcissists have made empathy out to be. A ridiculous notion because they don't really have it. They seriously do not care. So the reason I'm all fired up about this is because I ran into an old client of mine yesterday, right when I'm like, I'm just gonna be back into my peace and love, which I am. And you can have this be a peaceful warrior. To walk the spiritual path is not to be a pushover. That is what has also trampled me for so long because you go into meditation, you feel all light and love, and then you're like, I'm a narcissist target. Or like I made a video the other day about being a chosen one, which they've also taken and trampled. What I mean about being a chosen one is chosen to not be trampled, chosen to follow your heart. 
right? But even that now is like chosen to what? To be a narcissist target is what one of my awesome subscribers wrote. And I actually thought that was really funny because it's like, <laughs> that is what it is in a way. It's like, yeah, I'm chosen to be trampled on. I'm chosen to be made fun of because I have empathy. <laughs> Silly me. I'm chosen to be made fun of because I love people. <laughs> I know, idiot, loser, right? And so I'm fired up about it because I ran into this client of mine who was 100% trampled by a narcissist, reactive abuse, all sorts of things. He, he uh, did, I talked about her before, where he did, um, what is it called, uh, Amber Alert on her, took their daughter against court orders, and then recorded her like losing her mind because he was taking their daughter against court orders. And so that can make a loving mother a little crazy, especially when it's a dangerous person. And taking her against her will, daughter didn't want to go against court orders with her old best friend, who's also abusive and now in this abusive cycle as his new supply, had just beat the living crap out of her. She had like bruises all over her and bloody face and cuts and gashes. And so she's looking crazy, looking reactive, and he gets it on camera. And then now he's at the Snuggle Fest fireside with his sweater and new supply. Like, why is she so, why is she so crazy? Why is she acting so crazy? She's acting so crazy, Narky Narkerson, because you're abusive. You're abusive and you're manipulating and you know that. And then you can sit calmly because now you've gotten your fuel and narcissistic supply and you can sit and take family photos with the dog Barkley and look at your ex and go, why is she so, so crazy? Enough is enough. Empaths, stop your addiction. This is where we can take the responsibility. Stop your addiction to loving narcissists. See, narcissists lose respect for you when you love them, and that's why they abuse you. The more you love them, the more they will abuse you. Because one thing I'll agree with them is that, you know, you start to lose respect for yourself because why would you love somebody who's so abusive to you? That's what they think. They're like, I don't really have respect for you. Like I had one narcissist say, Leah, you're so smart. Come on. Like he was like, come on, catch up to the fact that I'm a jerk. Catch up to the fact that I'm lying to you. Catch up. Come on. I'm losing respect for you by the minute you say that you read behavior for a living. And yet I'm lying through my teeth at you in my cashmere sweater and you're belying, belying, believing, <laughs> that's what they do. They get you to belie, belie. You're believing their lies. You're believing their lies and they think you look like an idiot. So now this is where you have grace for yourself though because I heard my client, my colleague, client, dear soul sister on this planet say yesterday again, she's like, you know, but it's my fault, it's my fault. I said, no, it's not your fault for loving somebody and believing what they were saying to be the truth. What is your fault now is taking responsibility as if you deserved that abuse. No. And if we speak up about it, then you're a victim. Oh, come on, let's gather up and take our family photo. <laughs> Look at the victim over there. And then they might even get your friends and family and everybody because they're running defamation of character and smear campaigns all the time. This is what they do. They ran a smear campaign on empathy. Empathy is not common anymore, you guys. Empathy is a mystical creature that they make fun of. They are genius marketers. They will take everything and make it better. Bigger, better, faster. Remember, their whole end game is control. They want that control with or without you. 
So if they're not with you, this is why a lot of times the trauma bond gets so heavy and so hard to escape because the abuse is worse when you're gone. The abuse gets amplified a lot of times when you're gone. That's why people want to sleep with the enemy. That's why they want to keep their enemy close because it actually lessens. But be strong. You've got to break your addiction to the narcissist just like it's heroin or something you have to be around people watch videos like this be around people who've been through it because people who haven't aren't gonna get it and they're gonna go along with the slick and glossy campaign strategy of the narcissist and friends and family who even are privy to the narcissist smear campaigns and their genius marketing will believe them but those aren't your friends there is community out here. Please like and subscribe to this video. I mean, people are trying to even block a voice like mine. They're like, if she doesn't have some big following already, block her, shun her, get the trolls after her. I've got trolls after me. I have ex-narcs after me. I have, narcs are watching you, by the way. So once you've attracted one, remember, they want control. They're watching you. They are watching you. They are a walking marketing campaign. They are smoke and mirrors. So the reason why they think you're so stupid is because you fell for their costume. You fell for their cashmere sweater as if they're a nice guy or something. It was just a costume. I had a narcissist say to me once when we were dating and then I discovered that he had um, been dating other people. And I was like, oh, I didn't know you were dating other people. And he was like, why wouldn't you know that? I said, because you said, I'm not dating anybody else. <laughs> like he literally had said the day before, I haven't dated anyone in two years. You're the first person that I've dated in, in two years and I'm really interested in you and blah, blah, blah. This was like a few years ago. And again, don't be jealous. I attract them all, but now I'm stopping the pattern because I'm aware of it. So I'm like, the reason I thought that is because you said that, but they try to gaslight you and being like, why would you believe that? I'm a total lying just because I'm wearing the costume of a good person. I'm not a good person. And so they will lose respect for you the more you believe them. Remember, their end game is control. They wanna devalue you on the way out if they're discarding you or you lead them. That's why they do the smear campaign because they have to feel better about themselves for not being with you. And if they can't control you and be with you, they wanna control you without you by devaluing you and hopefully you'll feel so bad about yourself that either you'll attract more narcissists to continue their abuse that they laid in place or you'll just feel so bad about yourself that you'll isolate and be so scared of anybody because you'll think everybody operates this way because they'll convince you of that. They're convincing the world that empathy is so rare and weird and just not cool. Then they'll call you a narcissist. Then they'll do the Darvo technique. Deny, attack, reverse, uh, reverse victim offender. They do that every time. So then they call you the narcissist. So I have fake emails emailing me. Would you just shut up already drolling on and I hate you and you're a narcissist. And I'm like, why are you taking time out to find my email to write to me? Is this what you're doing to everybody that you hate online? Wow, is that time consuming? Holy cow. Or could this possibly be somebody that I know under a fake account? Or is this just a troll? But it makes you wonder. But that's the mind of a narcissist. They don't care. They want to stop you. They want to control you. They want to get you to shut up. Well, they can go off and take pictures with Barkley, Fireside. And then if you block them, it's because you're a lot of times scared for your life. Like this lady I worked with, she, I was a private coaching her because she had to go gray rock so often. If you know what gray walk is, it's where you shut down all of your emotions so that you don't react at all to them because she was a victim of reactive abuse. 
So she had to learn to not react at all. So then she came to me to express through the craft of acting so she could feel again. It is such a show. You know what I'm saying? It really is. It's horrifying. I'm talking about this because I deal with it in scene work as a director. You deal with massive abuse situations and now I'm seeing it in real life over and over. I've attracted a ton of narcissists. So I'm just talking about it because I'm sick of it. And then yesterday when I'm like all peace and love, I run into this old client and I'm like, okay, God. And she was like, would you please talk about this more? And with her permission, she said I could talk about her situation without you know saying her name because it could be helpful. This is what it looks like. I've heard stories of people with this kind of abuse and they'll call the police. Men too, by the way. That's another narcissist campaign. I don't know whoever came up with only men are, or women I meant, only men are narcissists. That's not true. They're personality traits, hello? They could be men or women. Maybe there's more men that do it, but there's women that do it too. And so I've read stories about people who will call the police men and women, right? Because the person is attacking, especially sometimes when it's, when it's a woman. And then the other person gets arrested because by the time the police come, they switch it around and they're calm as a cucumber having tea <laughs> while their spouse is like losing their mind because they were just completely abused. This is what it does to you. So you have to stop the addiction to loving these people. They think you're stupid for loving them because why would we love somebody so bad? That's a narcissist phrase too. Well, why don't you leave if it's so bad? Why don't you just leave if it's so bad? I'll abuse you even worse once you're gone. Why don't you just leave? So if you block them, if you leave them, they'll call you a narcissist. But a lot of times if you block them, it's because you're scared for your life. You're protecting yourself. If they block you, it's because they're scared that you're gonna expose them. So if you're ever friends with like some of their flying monkeys or something, you'll start seeing them fly, fly off or fall off or you'll start seeing, you just can see into these things. So how do we stop this? How do we stop the addiction? You've gotta trust your instincts. You gotta allow your anger to fuel sometimes change. So anger isn't all bad. Sometimes it fuels the change that we need. It made me so angry when I ran into this girl because she was still going through this kind of abuse with this guy. It's going to be a lifetime of it. You can sign up for a lifetime of it. And when you have kids with somebody like that, it can be very painful and difficult. But there is hope. You have to stay strong and keep your senses about you, which is almost impossible, but it is possible. It's almost impossible when everybody's gaslighting you, including possibly your friends and family, because again, they have great marketing. They're very charming. That's the thing that people don't understand about these people. They don't come at you rude and horrifying to begin with. They come extremely charming, serenading you. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. They mirror you. You see the good qualities in them. And then it's like a slow burn. The abuse comes in and covert narcissists are the worst. See, I, I had dealt with these big grandiose narcissists. So that's what I was on the lookout for. And this last one was covert. He was sneaky AF. It was horrifying. He can these are pastors. These are spiritual leaders. These are healer type people that are the one that's shy in the corner, very reserved, demure. Those are the scariest ones you have got to watch out. Stop your addiction to them. Stop trying to love them, but forgive yourself for believing their lies. You believed the costume. You believed their lies. They lied. They lied to you. So that's another comment that I love getting. I'm being very sarcastic if you can't tell when they're like, just because somebody is aloof doesn't mean that they're a narcissist. No, duh, 
oh my God, that's so obnoxious. No, just because somebody's aloof towards you and they don't like you doesn't mean they're a narcissist. When they lie, manipulate, love bomb, defame, discard, devalue, you know, all of that, they're a narcissist. And then they just play, oh, I was aloof because I didn't like you. Just don't lie. Don't lie. See, they get off on lying. They get off on lying. And you get off on trying to love the unlovable. It's like the mountain that can never be conquered. That's why, you know, battered women more often than men are battered. So they've done study after study on battered women who they can't leave. You go back. You go back nine and 10 times. They said on average, a battered woman goes back nine times and the 10th or 11th, they're dead. So this is why I'm talking about it. Yeah, I can be high vibe. You can be high vibe. You can be a peaceful warrior. To walk the peaceful warrior path, the spiritual warrior path is to feel anger, not have it turn against yourself so that it causes disease in your body but to go, wait, that was wrong. <laughs> and I can still be a high vibe spiritual person and stand up for myself and stand up for other really good people. You didn't do anything wrong by loving somebody who was lying to you. You didn't know, but you can stop the addiction. Go cold turkey and subscribe, like, comment, share. Let's make empathy more popular. This is getting absurd. It's getting absurd that sociopaths and narcissists have become so popular that we're like, teach us all how to be like you. Are you effing kidding me, you guys? We gotta stop. The path of a spiritual warrior, a BA spiritual warrior, peaceful warrior, is to feel anger, but allow it to fuel change in a positive, peaceful way. So again, sometimes when I am like in my meditation, I'm like, I don't want to talk about all that. We're all just one love, which we are, but it is not loving to continue to sign up and perpetuate and condone and congratulate abuse. That's not high vibe. That's not spiritual. That's not loving. So enough is enough. Say I'm done. I'm quitting my addiction. I'm quitting my addiction to loving narcissists. I'm gonna love myself more than them because in turn, that loves humanity. In turn, that makes empathy more popular than narcissism and sociopathic tendencies that are being crammed down our throat through mainstream everything. Yes, that is happening. So please, for yourself and for all of humanity, let's stop this addiction. Let's make empathy popular. Let's make it cool again. Let's make it not so rare. You got this, you're, you're a good person, otherwise you wouldn't care about this. And if you're a narcissist, then you'll yell at me about my makeup, tell me to shut up and that I need to go you know, do what to a bunch of, you know what? That's what they do. That's what they do. I can count on that. What can I count on you to do? That's what they do with their anger. They tear us down. And then we go, I'm high vibe, so I'm just gonna be trampled. Enough is enough. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped. I'll see you next time. Hey, what's up? I wanted to give you this shot of the full moon because this is a perfect opportunity. It doesn't matter when you're watching this. It's divine right timing. Enough is enough. <laughs>